The Royal Newfoundland Constabulary is one of the oldest police forces in North America. It officially formed in 1871, but its roots go back much further, to 1729. In that year, Newfoundland Governor Henry Osborne divided the island into six districts and appointed constables in each one. By 1732, there were 31 constables on the island. That number increased over the decades, but not enough to cope with a rapidly growing settler population. By the mid-1800s, there were calls for a larger and better organized police force. On Thursday night last, the shop of Mrs. John O'Brien, Water Street, was broken into and eight pounds in money abstracted from the till. The burglars cut a hole in the shutter of the glass door, broke glass, and were thus enabled to remove the fastenings and effect an entrance. They have not been apprehended. Is not this robbery suggestive of the necessity of the night police? We trust the authorities will not lose any further time in organizing an efficient force for the protection of the town during the fall and winter months. The situation reached a boiling point in 1870 when Britain withdrew its garrison from Fort Townsend in St. John's. Until then, the soldiers had helped to police the colony. Their departure on November 8th made it necessary for the Newfoundland government to replace the system of local constables with a larger and more efficient police force. The government hired Thomas Foley to organize and lead the new force. The 22 years he had served with the Royal Irish Constabulary made him an expert in police matters. Foley arrived at St. John's in April of 1871. One month later, a call for applicants appeared in the Royal Gazette. Wanted, a few strong active young men between 19 and 27 years of age, single or widowers, without any children, and at least 5 feet 8 inches in height. They must be well recommended for honesty, sobriety, and fidelity, capable of reading without hesitation any printed or written document, and of writing a legible hand. Before appointment, they must undergo a medical examination and be pronounced fit for service. Foley modeled the new police force on the Royal Irish Constabulary. He also took over Fort Townsend as its headquarters. But his tenure as Inspector General of the new Constabulary only lasted for two years. After his sudden death in 1873, Foley was replaced by Paul Cardi. Cardi had served for 24 years on the Royal Irish Constabulary and brought a wealth of knowledge to the Newfoundland Constabulary. He led the force from 1873 until 1885. It was a period of rapid growth. 27 new police stations opened across the island, including the first ones on the west coast. By 1883, the force had grown to about 100 men. It also had a mounted unit of constables and horses. Constable John McCowan played a major role in the formation of the mounted police force. Like Cardi and Foley, McCowan was another veteran of the Royal Irish Constabulary. He had moved to St. John's in 1871 to join the colony's new constabulary and to help with its organization. Over the next eight years, he was stationed at several communities, including Harbor Grace, and Catalina. In 1879, McCowan became the governor of the St. John's Penitentiary. He held that post until 1895 when he became the new head of the Newfoundland Constabulary. That same year, the government placed the St. John's Fire Department under the control of the police force. As a result, McCowan became the Inspector General of the Newfoundland Constabulary and the St. John's Fire Department. McCowan played a major role in the expansion and reorganization of the constabulary. Under his watch, the city of St. John's was divided into three police districts, Central, Eastern, and Western. Fire halls opened in each region, and each one also housed a district police station, as well as barracks for the constables. Twenty constables worked out of the Central Fire Station, the Eastern and Western stations each had 14. All three stations remained in close contact with police headquarters at Fort Townsend by what was then a new form of technology, the telephone. 
McCowan also created a detective branch within the constabulary to handle the most serious of crimes. It was the forerunner of what is today known as the Criminal Investigation Division of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. Another first was achieved in 1908 when John Sullivan became the new Inspector General of the Constabulary. Born in Trinity, Sullivan was the first Newfoundlander to become head of the police. He had been with the Constabulary since its inception in 1871 and had worked closely with McCowan to bring the fire department under the Constabulary. After McCowan died in 1908, Sullivan replaced him as acting head of the police. He was officially appointed to the position in 1909. More change came in the 1920s when the first constables were stationed in Labrador. Rumors of a major gold find at Stag Bay attracted a sudden influx of prospectors. Twelve constables were dispatched to the area. They became known as the Gold Coast Police. But the gold strike never materialized, and the constabulary withdrew from Labrador after just one year. It returned about a decade later, in 1934, but the stay was once again short-lived. After the Newfoundland Ranger Force was created in 1935, its men replaced the constables in Labrador and in some remote parts of the island. By then, the Great Depression had plunged Newfoundland and Labrador into a period of enormous economic hardship. Unemployment was widespread and so was public unrest. Letters appeared in local newspapers asking the government to create jobs or increase relief payments. Dissatisfaction turned into rage when Prime Minister Sir Richard Squires was accused of misusing public money in 1932. On April 5th, a public demonstration outside the colonial building escalated into a riot of about 10,000 people. The mob threw stones at windows, raided the building, and looted government offices. Some constables were injured while trying to police the crowd. Two had to be hospitalized. Worried that other riots might break out in the coming days, the constabulary created a reserve force of over 100 men. This remained in effect until 1938. By then, Patrick O'Neill was the chief of police. Under his leadership, the constabulary expanded its police training programs. O'Neill handpicked constables to receive special training at Scotland Yard, at the RCMP College at Regina, and with the FBI in Washington. When the men returned, they led training sessions at Fort Townsend to pass on what they had learned to their colleagues. The outbreak of the Second World War in 1939 had a big impact on policing. Constables had to investigate reports of espionage and sabotage, they had to guard strategic locations and deal with the rapid influx of thousands of servicemen from Canada, America, and England. They also seized two ships of enemy registration and guarded prisoners of war at an internment camp in Kitty Vitti. Blackout conditions were also in effect, and this made policing much more difficult and dangerous at night when almost no artificial light could be used. In response to the increased workload and heightened sense of danger, the force created a security division to handle wartime concerns. Even more change came after Confederation with Canada in 1949. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police replaced the constabulary in all areas of the new province except for St. John's. It also absorbed the Newfoundland Ranger Force. The constabulary closed about 15 police stations across the island and relocated its staff and their families to St. John's. Thank you.